What's going on everybody? Matt from Customs by Matthew here. And if you've been following along over the last four months, you would know that I have been busy building a brand new backyard studio. As you can see here, it is finally completed. A couple weeks ago, I put the last figure onto my shelf and I have just been enjoying it ever since. I plan on making a couple videos to showcase a couple things. First off, what we'll be looking at today my beautiful display cases ah, so pretty but I also plan on doing another video to talk about some of the efficiencies I've built into my workspace but that's a video for another day today let's take a look at my collection so I have six bookcases each one has four shelves of action figures on it this is the first bookshelf right when you walk in the door it is mostly Star Wars related so this is the first of three Star Wars shelves. It is prequel era based. Um, this is probably like my second favorite era of Star Wars. Uh, I didn't initially love the prequels and I still don't think they hold up very well, but I do like the mythology from that era. So yeah, I, it's important that I kind of have this section represented. So that's a really cool General Grievous model kit from Bandai uh, with a GPS lot cape. And that little Watto statue there is 3D printed and I painted it. Um, then you got a bunch of figure arts Jedi's out in the front. And yeah, a good mix of figure arts and uh, Star Wars Black Series. Okay, now we're moving over to my most populated shelf of my whole collection. This is my original trilogy slash Rogue One slash Rebels. I know Rebels doesn't technically fit here, but I didn't have anywhere else to put them. As you can see there, my Rebels has a custom Old Man Rex and Agent Callus, which I made. Um, yeah, this is my most populated shelf with 74 figures. It's a freaking lot. Uh, my favorite era of Star Wars for sure is all the original trilogy stuff, uh, but I also am a huge Rebels fan, so um, yeah, it makes sense that they're all together, all the best stuff in one shelf. <laughs> um, Again, nice mix of Black Series and SH Figure Arts. And um, yeah, I just, I love this shelf, but it is stuffed. All right, so the third and final Star Wars shelf is my Mandoverse slash sequel trilogy shelf. I have a couple cool custom pieces on here. First is that Carson Tava that's staring at you right there. That's something I put together early last year. Uh, and the other is that uh, green rabbit which is a Star Wars inspired Bucky O'Hare that my buddy Opticon Customs did for me so um, yeah the Mando section has really really filled out over the last couple years which is awesome but there's still a couple characters I'd really like to get uh, to fill out the rest of the roster uh, and then you know the sequel trilogy stuff I'm not really a huge huge fan of it but a couple of the figures are cool so they will remain on my shelf another day fourth shelf on this bookcase is uh gargoyles which uh i freaking love these figures but those wings are ridiculous um i'm happy i got them all in and made them look good uh but yeah i'm calling that team basically complete at this point so i don't think i need anything more uh this mcu display is also what i'm probably going to call complete I got rid of most of my MCU last year, so this is what's left of it, and uh, I'm perfectly content with it that way. So, One little spot on the bottom of the shelf next to my accessories where I put my solo figures. Uh, I just have attachment to these because they're some of the early figures that started using the face printing tech, and they always stood out to me as being a good looking group, especially because it was a complete good looking group, which we don't normally get. Okay, moving on to bookshelf number two. This bookcase is split into two different properties. I have two shelves for Hasbro Power Rangers Lightning Collection, and then I have two shelves of Mattel WWE figures. All right, so this colorful bunch is my Mattel WWE Golden slash New Gen shelf. Um, this is my favorite two eras of WWE. And uh, yeah, I, it's very nostalgic for me. Uh, there's a couple customs in here. That Brutus the Barber Beefcake that you saw at the very beginning is a custom. The Owen Hart that you're about to see in the video is also custom. And then I've done a bunch of Ultimate Edition upgrades on LOD Hawk, on the Rockers, uh, just to get that updated articulation into some of those old Elite figures. 
So this is my second WWE shelf and it's all about the Attitude Era. Got a little Heart Foundation going on at the front with a Brian Pillman custom. A little Nation of Domination in the back. Got a big old gap there behind DX which I plan on filling with some NWO characters. Got a Hollywood Hogan and some Outsiders coming. And then on the right side of the case, you know, I got a bunch of uh, Ultimate Edition um, upgraded figures. The Hardy Boys, Edge and Christian have both been given the uh, Ultimate Upgrade. Same with Chris Jericho. And then I did a bunch of repaints on some faces. Jericho, Dudley's, Edge and Christian. Just to kind of get them in line with the Mattel face printing, which is actually pretty good. And switching over to the Power Rangers side of things, this is the first of two shelves and it is all about my favorite team, the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. Um, so you can see here that over a relatively short time span, the Lightning Collection by Hasbro has filled in the ranks pretty good. We've gotten all the main villains, or most of the main villains, lots of Monsters of the Week, all many different versions of the Rangers, we got Putties. Um, still would love to see a squat and Babu join Rita's goons. Uh, I hope that's a possibility somewhere down the line still. Um, that would be kind of the last few pieces before I could say this collection is actually complete. Uh, you also see in the back there some Solich Jokin uh, Zords, Megazord and Dragon Zord. They're both grail pieces of mine and yeah, I freaking love them. And moving over to that second ranger shelf, this is where all my miscellaneous Power Rangers teams live. So as you can see, we've got the Zeo Rangers there, we've got the Turtle Rangers from the Boom Comics. Uh, we have a set of Mighty Morphin Power Rangers in the back using their morphers all unmasked. It was just to show off the head sculpts. It doesn't really make sense holding the morphers since they're on their belts, but you know, looks kind of cool. Uh, we got some Ninjetti Rangers up front with some Tangu Warriors behind them, some Omega Rangers, and then second from the back you can see the Alien Rangers. There are a couple things I'd still like to see on this shelf. Maybe some civilian Mighty Morphin Rangers would be cool. Also be nice to get those original movie suits as well. And to finish up this bookshelf, here is the Ren and Stimpy from Super 7. They just kind of live on that extra little space on the bottom. Alright, so bookshelf 3 is all about Spider-Man. Bottom shelf has some comic Avengers and animated series X-Men in with the animated Spider-Man stuff. Then I have two shelves of Spider-Villains and Friends, and of course a Spider-Verse shelf. The tops of my cases are all decked out real nice too, but we'll look at those later on in the video. Okay, so this is the first of four Spider-Man shelves, and this is my Spider-Verse shelf. This is where all my spider people live. As you can see, over the years I have acquired quite a collection of Spider-Man variants. And uh, yeah, they look so cool all posed up. And it's been really cool because the last few years, especially with the success of the Sony Into the Spider-Verse movies, it's been cool to get like the heavily stylized, like the cartoons, uh, action figures. Um, they look great on the shelf next to all the rest of the legends. This is the first of two Spider-Man and his friends and foes shelves. Uh, this is reserved for the more classic looks for his villains. Um, and there's a few customs to call out on this shelf. That Electro up front is made by New Collector Customs. The Spot and the Black Cat are made by myself, as is that import style Daredevil up in the very front made on a V-Toys body. Um, that Razorback is kind of out of place, but he was added at last minute when I couldn't fit him onto the next shelf we're going to look at, which is the second of the Friends and Foes of Spider-Man shelf. So you can see we start off with a little 90s section of some Maximum Carnage and some different symbiotes from the Life Foundation. Um, and then we move into just some more random villains and, you know, some Spideys. We got the new warriors in the back. I just recently picked up Justice, but I'm not quite ready to dissect this to get him back there just yet. So we'll wait a little bit on that. Uh, then you got some superior foes of Spider-Man, more modern stuff, Mr. Negative, Armadillo. Um, yeah, so just a little mix of more Spider-Man friends and, and villains. The last Spider-Man shelf is a Spider-Man the Animated Series. I'm uh, pretty happy with the amount of stuff we've seen from Hasbro already in this line and it seems like they're not stopping so that's pretty exciting too. Then there's just a small spattering of uh, comic Avengers, 
um, that are left over from the last purge, and then a section of X-Men the Animated Series, um, which I'm calling done. I don't really need anything more than what you see there, so. Sticking with the X-Men theme, this bookcase is all X-Men. We have two shelves of X-Villains with a Sentinel passing through one of the shelves. We have a shelf of miscellaneous X-Men including Outback, Original, Uncanny X-Force, and Astonishing. And then we have a Wolverine and Deadpool shelf. And again, we will look at the tops of these cases later on in the video. The first shelf in this case is devoted to my favorite superhero, Wolverine, and the less favorite but very fun to pose Deadpool. Um, the thing I like about Deadpool and collecting Deadpool is you can just do anything with his character. You can pose him in silly ways, you can pose him in like cool attack poses, and it all kind of makes sense. It all kind of works for Wade. Um, and then in regards to Wolverine, you know, he's just, he's my favorite. He's badass, he's Canadian, and uh, yeah, I fucking love him. And his figures are a lot of fun for the most part, uh, once you replace those shitty little like toothpick claws that Hasbro gives him. Uh, but they've been rectifying and making it better as of late, so let's hope they keep that up. This is the first miscellaneous X-Men shelf, um, starting with some Outback X-Men. Then we move into a custom project that I have yet to start, my original X-Men team. Uh, behind them will be the original X-Factor team, which is just older versions of them, uh, moving over to Astonishing X-Men, and then finishing up with the Uncanny X-Force. These next two shelves kind of work as one, so this is my collection of X-Villains. Uh, you see you got some Brotherhood of Evil Mutants in the front, that Sauron's kind of hanging from the ceiling by a magnet. Uh, that big HasLab Sentinel passes through the shelf to the one underneath it, which we'll take a look at in a minute. You've got the Wolverine rogues gallery on the right hand side of the case and then you've even got a Wolverine from the X-Men 97 line uh, in the Sentinel's hand ready to be blasted. I wanted to do something a bit more animated with the Sentinel this time so I think this worked out pretty well. And here we have the bottom shelf of the X-Villains display. Uh, I know it looks deceiving, but there's actually quite a bit of room here to still grow this section if I want. I just have to push Apocalypse and his crew like back towards the wall a bit more. Um, but yeah, you can see the Sentinel's legs pass through from the shelf above. And speaking of Sentinels, here's the little Sentinel section of the shelf, complete with my 12-inch custom uh, Sentinel figure there. You got your mojo, you got your spiral, you got your hellfire club. Um, a nice mix of important ex-villains. Bookshelf number five is more X-Men. As you can see, I got an AOA shelf, I got a 90 shelf, I got another miscellaneous X-Men shelf, and then I have a video game shelf, which used to just be Street Fighter and is now escalated into a wider array of options. So I started by adding a set of Mario Brothers, um, also added uh, Link and Kirby and Bowser. Uh, these uh, premium DNA Battletoads are pretty damn cool figures, but honestly, Jada Toys is just killing it. Uh, love the Mega Man line, love the Street Fighter line. I am very excited to replace my SH Figuarts Street Fighters with Jada Toys. Really love the aesthetic, and for the price, you just can't beat the value. They're awesome. Um, yeah, I'm excited to see this shelf fill up this year. Next up, we have another miscellaneous X-Men shelf, and this shelf has three different teams on it. Uh, the one you're currently looking at is the Marvel Now era Uncanny X-Men and All New X-Men, which are the Time Displaced original X-Men. Then we move over to the Strike Team uh, blue and yellow costumes from X-Men 275. And then we move over to my favorite era of X-Men storytelling, uh, some of the pinnacle of the X-Men storytelling in my opinion, uh, the giant size X-Men of the uh, mid-70s into the 80s. So yeah, some really good uh, stuff there. The nice thing about these uh, teams is they're all complete. So any additional space I have in there can be used for other things like maybe an ultimate X-Men team. 
Okay, up next we are looking at the 90s X-Men teams. Uh, so this is all the teams from the 90s. We're starting off with X-Force, Cable, and then X-Force. Uh, then we move over to the X-Men Blue team, which bleeds into the X-Men Gold team. You can see up front there I have a cool little concept idea for X-23. Um, and then we move into Excalibur in the back and X-Factor in the front. Um, I love this era of X-Men. I love the costumes and the storytelling was okay, but the costumes and the art is what really stood out in this era. Sticking with the 90s, uh, this last X-Men shelf is all about Age of Apocalypse and Generation X. So you can see uh, I've got a couple customs in that Gen X section, uh, planning on doing some painting on the three ladies up front as well. Uh, they are currently out of the case and being uh, prepped for paint. Um, and then you can also see in my Generation X display, I have quite a few customs. This is probably where I've added the most custom work uh, to my display, the, probably the section with the most customs in it. Um, I don't know, I just, I love these designs. Uh, the stories were pretty fun as well. Um, but yeah, the, something about the designs, they're just, they're all so different from their usual looks. It just makes it a lot of fun. Okay, before we dive into my NECA turtle shelves, I just have to apologize in advance. The placement of this bookshelf, which is the final bookshelf, is in a little corner and it's really difficult to get a straight on shot. So I had to kind of improvise on some of these videos. This is my NECA movie turtle shelf and I love these figures. They are so awesome. They look great. They come with tons of accessories. NECA just does such a great job with these movie figures. Um, thankfully the shelf is mostly complete at this point other than missing a couple characters, mainly Tatsu and, and uh, MC Hammer. Uh, I'm pretty satisfied with how the shelf looks. And I just kind of threw these guys on here as well. Uh, just some more like 80s, 90s characters from movies of my past. Okay, this is shelf number one of two of the NECA Toon Turtles. And yeah, as you can tell, I love this line a lot too. Uh, it's crazy to me that we've gotten so deep into the line. Like it's to the point now where, um, you know, I'm not buying everything anymore. I don't you know, know a lot of the characters that are being shown at this point. We've gotten pretty much everyone that is of importance to me. But yeah, some of them just look too cool to pass up on. So I'm sure I will still buy a few here and there, but I'd say this collection's coming close to an end. I also love all the little accessories they come with, and you'll see on the front of this shelf and the next one that I have a lot of fun with trying to house a lot of these little accessories just in fun ways. All right, and this is shelf number two of my NECA Toon Turtles. Uh, again, you can see it's quite full. Um, there's a couple deviants from the NECA line in here. First one is that Earthworm Jim we're just passing by. That is a custom made by Ace Customs. I got it in the secret swap one year. Uh, I freaking love it so much and I think it fits in well here. Um, and then the other one you're going to see on the left hand side of the screen is that Tick Custom. Uh, and I guess even though it is not a NECA figure, it is technically made by someone at NECA. That was made by uh, Trevor, who is the lead design on uh, the NECA Turtle lines. So yeah, I got that in the figure swap as well, which is pretty awesome. Um, yeah, as you can see here too, uh, lots of accessories and just, yeah, this is a, another really fun shelf. These are fun shelves to set up. All right, and the last shelf to show off is this miscellaneous turtle shelf. Um, so you can see I have the Mirage Turtles, I have a set of Super 7 Turtles, and uh, another set of movie turtles in the back that's from the first STCC box set that they put out. Um, but yeah, basically anything that doesn't have a home on my Toon Turtles or movie shelf ends up here. And uh, yeah, it's hard to not collect the brothers because they're, they're fun to have in different versions. So, But yeah, that's my turtles. All right, before we wrap this up, I just wanted to showcase what is on the top of my display cases. So this is kind of where I put like packaging that I like or figures that have been replaced on my shelf uh, that I have sentimental value to and like don't want to get rid of or figures that just don't have a permanent home or a spot in my collection. I just wanted a place that I could kind of put a random assortment of figures that 
um, would look cool or kind of like represent stuff that I like, like the Green Ranger and the Dragon Zord. That's the Super 7 Dragon Zord, so awesome. Um, but yeah, so nothing crazy. I also have some fodder in here, like those WWE figures. They're all fodder, but I figured just instead of putting them in a drawer, they can hang out on top. And finally, this shelf is above the entrance door, and it's, again, mostly just packaging that I think is cool, and a couple in package figures, picture of me and my pops, and uh, yeah, this fun Deadpool bursting out of uh, retro packaging, so... That is pretty much a wrap on the studio tour, and I hope you guys enjoyed it, and please leave a like and a comment below.